Actung, everyone. Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing very, very well. My name is Jimmy Smith, and welcome to another Wine with Jimmy session. This one is on understanding WSET level three again, and this is actually the third in a series about Germany. So we looked at the Mosul and Riesling, the Rheingau and German wine laws, and this is the other regions of Germany and other grape varieties. So it's slightly a smaller section than the, the rather large Rheingau section. But if this is the first one you've stumbled across, please do make sure you watch all three of them for comprehensive studying knowledge and understanding for the WSET level three. As I mentioned, this is remarkably uh, useful to, for those of you that are preparing and studying for your WSET level three theory examination. Um, in with this, we'll, uh, we'll look at some maps look at a bit of a video uh, and um, understand the, the key concepts. And then we'll have a, a working written question at the end, a partial working written question, which I'll work through with you so you can understand how questions are likely to be asked and how you should structure your answers. Um, all of the social media is at the bottom. You can comment, uh, ask any questions in the YouTube um, comment section below this video or get in touch with Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Wine with Jimmy, at West London Wine, at South London Wine are both of my wine schools here in London, United Kingdom. And then finally, Streatham Wine House, which is my wine bar in, um, it was a bit bright, uh, in, in London as well. Okay, so let's go to those other regions. So this, just to reiterate for you, we are not looking at the key two regions because they are done on separate presentations. That's the Mosul and the Rheingau. We're looking at all of the other ones. And I'm going to focus on the left hand side in future slides that follow this one. But um, we are looking at Nahe, the Rheinhessen, Pfalz. OK, so they're actually all quite close to the regions that we've done before, which is the Rheingau and the Mosul. But then we have Franken and Baden over the side. Now, these are not areas that are likely to come up as a theory examination, but they may come up as your multiple choice. So they are worth just having a quick look at. Um, so we have uh, Franken, first of all. So Franken is um, as an area to the far uh, east of this zone of southwest Germany. Uh, and it has Würzburg as a main city, main point at this. And there are some um, excellent wines around Würzburg on very steep facing uh, slopes. The very interesting thing about Franken is that whereas most regions in Germany lead with their principal noble grape variety Riesling, Franken actually leads with Silvana. Um, so that is quite an important one to immediately put down. Let's do that in green, shall we, just here. So Silvana. Okay, and you'll note this different spelling that you'll find in comparison to Alsace, where it has a Y instead of the I. Um, so uh, Silvana as a variety here actually comes into its own and produces quite robust, round and floral star wines. Um, I always remember them because they're bottled in these flask shaped round bottles uh, and the wines can be wonderfully round as well. They're excellent, excellent wines. Um, it is an early flowering, early budding, early flowering, early ripening variety Silvana. So there are issues with frost. The best of those will be that a combating frost will be located next to its uh, next to its river. Uh, which is the uh, which is the main river, uh, and uh, they are wonderfully complex wines, the Silvanas. Um, so they um, they do produce Grosse Gewach here as well, which is your first growth style wines in Franken, and that is for Silvana, Riesling, Weissburgunder, Grauburgunder, and a bit of Spätburgunder. So remember Silvana, please, for that area. That's all it's likely to ask as a multiple choice. Below Würzburg, and then stretching all the way down, um, um, really, you know, with the Rhine on its western side, it's in this one, it's this kind of reddish zone. This is Baden, and Baden is really quite an interesting area. It's the warmest. Uh, you do find quite a plethora of grape varieties here. But really, I think uh, the best way to remember it is Baden is like Burgundy. Baden, Burgundy, Baden, Burgundy. Um, and in that, that's where you find your the real leading grape variety here, which is Pinot Noir. There's also a bit of Chardonnay, in fact, down here as well. So let's scribble that down. Um, of course, they call it Spätburgunder. 
um, but it can be called Pinot Noir as well. So I put that in brackets. There's also a sizable amount of two other grape varieties that are related to Pinot um, Noir, to Spätburgund, and that is Weißburgunder uh, and Grauburgunder. Oops, Burgunder. Okay, so these two varieties are whites, Weiss, white, white Burgundy, Pinot Blanc, this one. And then Grau Burgunder, gray, gray Burgundy, Pinot Gris. Uh, so let's put that down just in brackets here, Pinot Blanc. And then uh, gray is Pinot Gris on that far side. So all of the Pinots in this Baden area, there are other varieties. I've mentioned Chardonnays found here a little bit as well. Um, the most famous part really of Baden is down um, really towards the southern zone. Uh, so this is this part here down in Baden is actually the bit that is opposite Alsace and the southern Alsace region. So Alsace, let's just draw, draw it on here. So you've got a fair representation of what uh, Alsace and where it is. Alsace is pretty much uh, in, in this kind of area, okay, up to Strasbourg, that kind of zone. Uh, and then dotted, really right in this bottom part just here, is possibly the most famous of them. And this is an area which is called the Kaiserstuhl. So the Kaiserstuhl, meaning um, uh, your uh, uh, king's chair or king's throne, is a wonderful outcrop of granite where it really does specialize in Pinot Noir in the Kaiserstuhl, wonderfully phonetically German uh, naming there. Um, so that's a real wonderful part of it, very warm part. Um, down here, of course, on its west, it has the Rhine and then Alsace beyond that and the Vosges Mountains. And then to its easterly side, uh, it is actually the Schwarzwald or the Black Forest. Um, so quite a, quite a special place for um, different interesting wines. Some of the most full-bodied and rounded Pinot Noirs come from, uh, from this area. Um, cool, so that is the Kaiserstuhl in Baden. Um, now we're going to focus on Nache, the Rheinhessen and Pfalz, our three um, more important regions where there are more specific things to know about here and, and villages. Um, so let's move on to those. First up, we're going to look at Nacha. And just by looking at this picture here, you'll see the yellow area of the Mosul and the, the very green area here of the Rheingau. Nacha kind of sits in between those two on the river Nacha. Uh, and that's important because that's actually how the style of Rieslings are shaped as well. They sit between styles of the Mosul and the Rheingau, not as robust as the Rheingau, but certainly more um, more concentrated than Mosul, most Mosul Riesling. So that's quite an important thing to remember, where it kind of sits between. Um, the most important places within Nacha uh, are, are on the Nacha River. So you see the Nacha River, which uh, runs upwards here. Uh, this one uh, has two places. We have Schloss Bockelheim, which is down here. Um, this is kind of in the middle part of the Nacha region. But this, on this map, of course, is this far southerly, westerly point. And then a place called Bra um, Bad Kuznach, uh, which is up here. Most of the great vineyards are located in these dark purple areas situated between Schloss Bockelheim and Bad Kuznach. Um, so they are, can be wonderfully complex. Of course, what, look at the direction of the slopes that we've got here. So a lot of these, I mean, they're facing this way. These ones are going down this way this one's this way, you're generally looking at south points of the compass. Uh, so we are looking at, therefore, sort of south, uh, south east to south west facing slopes. Okay. Uh, and they can be steep. Um, and this is where you get that complexity from. It's not like the Rheingau, which is one quite big, steep slope. Um, right next to the very wide river of the Rhine at that point. This is the, uh, the Naha, which is a smaller river, so there's less warmth absorption here, less reflection, but it is the steep slopes that uh, really do counter um, for the body here and produce a bit of body behind the wines. Um, and there are um, wonderful wines that are uh, GG wines as well, Grosse Gewach, and that would be from Riesling in this area. 
Okay, so that is the Naha. You may know it for a very special wine, a wine good called uh, Donhof, who's one of the most famous names in this area. So that's a Naha, sandwiched between the Mosul and the Rheingau in terms of its style and quite like its geography as well. And then next door to the Rheinhessen going east, below the Rheingau, so I can scribble that up here. And so the Rheingau would be just up here. Okay, and the Nacher is over here. And then Falz is off to the south. Okay, um, we have the Rheinhessen area. This is uh, Germany's largest wine region for vineyard and production. Um, so quite a bit of sizable stuff produced here. Um, and that's historically what it's been known for, mass production, certainly making those kind of mediocre, medium sweet wines called Liebfrau Milch. Um, so that's that's kind of what it's sadly its infamy is all about. However, recently there has been a brilliant emergence of young winemakers and more modern winemakers that are crafting different styles of wine from a variety of different style of grape varieties as well. So it's becoming quite an exciting time down here. Um, there's quite a few black varieties produced here. Spätburgunder is quite important. Um, there's also Dornfelder and Portugieser produced in this area. But really, the white varieties of Müller Turgau uh, and Riesling are the most important. So let's just scribble those down. So we have quite a lot of Müller Turgau, or sometimes written as Rivana. We, of course, have a sizable production of Riesling as well. Uh, and then we have um, some Spätburgunder here as well, amongst others like Dornfelder uh, and Portuguesa as well. Um, so yes, quite a, quite a lot going on here with the amount they produce in this uh, in this region. Um, so the kind of the places they wish you to know really is just the one area which is called Nierstein. And Nierstein is famous for quite an average wine called Nierstainer, but there is some wonderful steep slopes right next to the Rhine River here, which is uh, which is called the Rhine Terrasse. Uh, and that's these excellent steep slopes which are facing kind of east-southeast direction, in some instances kind of southeast, um, where they'll get much better ripeness, of course. They'll get the Rhine ripening, um, so that's the warmth from the Rhine. And it is said to be where some of their fullest bodied Rieslings come from, from this area. So the Rhine Terrasse there, let's scribble that down so you know that. So that's quite famous for fuller Rieslings. Uh, this is due to steep Oops, due to steep slopes. Please make sure you know that there that's around near Stein as an area. And then the last one down is below the Rheinhessen, and this is the Falz. And in fact, really the easiest thing to sort of try to remember the Falz is it's a continuation of Alsace. Um, so let's just put this in at the northern area. So up here is the Rheinhessen that we've just looked at. And then below it, um, if you go off to the bottom, this would be where Alsace will be. So um, let me just draw some arrows in that way so it gives you an idea of the direction because they're not immediately there. Um, so the Rheinhessen is, of course, up this way, and the Alsace is down this way. Um, and as you hit the bottom of the uh, Faltz region, it's called the Gateway of Alsace, or the Gateway of the Faltz, if you're going the other way around. It's a wonderful border here where you can stop and over sort of see the landscape. It's quite lovely. Um, so this is the second largest uh, big uh, producing area after the Rheinhessen that we just did on the last slide. So there's a fair bit of wine down here as well on the wine route as you go places through uh, like Landauer, Forst, Didersheim. Uh, and this middle area, uh, which includes Forst and Didersheim, is called the Middle Hart. And the Hart part of it is because of the mountain range here, which is called the Hart Mountains. Now, this is a continuation, if you go off south here, of the Vosges, because that is, of course, the, uh, the, the westerly point of Alsace that protects the Alsace region. So the Vosges is off down in that area. So it becomes the Hart Mountains, and that protects this region against any westerly winds. 
So that's why our vineyards are nestled on the easterly side. Um, so the, um, the region is very dry due to this protection, just like in Alsace, where it's equally the driest region of France. Um, and Riesling is the most commonly planted grape variety here. There's a bit of Muller Turgau as well, um, but you're increasing numbers of Pinot Blanc and Pinot Gris in this zone. Um, we have uh, Dornfelder being produced quite a bit as well. So let's scribble these down. You've got uh, a fair bit of Riesling. You've got Muller Turgau in this area. Okay. Um, we have uh, um, increasing amounts of Pinot Gris and Pinot Blanc, which are, are Grauburgunder and Weissburgunder. Uh, and then as reds, really the most important red here is, is Dornfelder, the big fleshy grape variety, um, which we'll put down here, Dornfelder. Um, but also there's a really important thing to note here that we've got an, an increasing amount of things like Pinot Noir um, and an increasing amount of things like Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. It's quite a forward thinking, innovative area, quite ambitious as well. Um, some brilliant young winemakers in this region too. So that's kind of a spillover from the Rhein-Hessen area. The most established area are those two bolded zones, so Forst and Didersheim. Uh, these are um, on towards the west of the villages, going into the Hart Mountains on some rather steep slopes as well. And this is where some of the fullest expressions of Rieslings will be found. Um, so some great, great wines also found in the Fouts region. So that completes our look here. So three areas really where you must know something about, that's Fouts, Rheinhessen and Nacher. And then um, really for multiple choice only, Franken for Silvana, Baden for the Pinots with the Kaiserstuhl. Um, so let's have a quick look at a, a video, which classically, um, I don't have uh, ready, <laughs> so you'll just have to bear with me one second as I find the link for it. Where are we? Come to me, come to me. Uh, so, oh, I need to get rid of that, don't I? Here we go. Uh, so it's coming, it's coming. So let's get the link, voila. And then we load it here, it's all ready. So I'm gonna show you just these key regions so you can get an idea of how they look and get a good, good feel for them. These areas, just to repeat, the places like in Nacha, like Schloss Bockelheim, uh, around Nierstein in the Rheinhessen, and then around Forst and Deidersheim in Faltz, are areas that have this good exposure, good topography, good stopes, uh, slopes, which are often terraced, and that's where you'll get the fullest expressions of Rieslings from. So that's what you're gonna see quite a lot in this two minute video. So there is the wonderful uh, nation of Germany, and we're going down, of course, to the southwest. The first place we're going to go to uh, is we're going to look at the Nacher, uh, which is the river Nacher, um, and that's in between those two places here. You've got Bad Kuznach up here and Schloss Bockelheim. We had a map of this earlier. We're going to join at Schloss Bockelheim, and you can see some wonderful steep slopes there in the, onto the left of that. But we're gonna go down to this eye level and look as we follow the Nacha River, which is not the biggest, but you'll see, see on the left-hand side, which are south-facing slopes, these are wonderful exposure uh, on um, often granite and some limestone, producing some of these wonderfully complex Rieslings. Uh, and there are lovely um, Grosser Gewack dry styles produced here, and there are some sweet wines as, as well produced. So we're carrying on following this, uh, and I think we're heading all the way up to Brad, uh, Bad Kruznach. Yes, we are. So um, just please note again, the river is not the biggest. Uh, the Nacha is a smaller river, and I think that's one of the major reasons really why it's nowhere near as complex a wine as the Rheingau, but some wonderful wines produced there. Here is Nierstein on the eastern part of the Rheinhessen. There is the much, much wider river of the Rhine, and here is the Rhine Terrasse. Uh, so these are these east facing, and in some instances, southeast facing slopes. These will produce quite full bodied Rieslings as well. They won't be as complex normally as the Nacher or the Rheingau, but will certainly have some more body behind them than somewhere like the Mosel. And then we head down to um, the Faltz zone, where you can see here, this is the Hart mountain range, the forest topped Hart mountain range, a continuation of the Vosges above Strasbourg. So that's important. We are now looking kind of south, southwest, uh, 
we are looking at Didersheim, and you can see some good slopes there as you go into the Hart Mountains. And then we go towards Forst, and you've got a continuation of those slopes again, facing kind of south southeast again, uh, more southeasterly. Okay, so that gives you a real good idea for those key areas in those remaining German wine regions. Um, the key grape varieties you are looking at here is we have Müller Thurgau uh, and Silvana and Spätburgunder Dornfelder. Now that's not just for these regions. We're talking about other grape varieties because on previous presentations, the one where we have the Mosel and the other when we have the Rheingau, we go into Riesling in much greater detail. But now we're covering the other varieties, so not Riesling. Here we have Müller Thurgau, the second most planted white grape variety. And Müller Thurgau was created in the end of the 19th century, in the 1880s, in Geisenheim. Um, and it was a crossing between Riesling, the all-important Riesling, and another variety called Madeleine Royale, an early ripening, large yielding variety. Uh, Müller Thurgau has taken on really the Madeleine Royale characteristics more than anything. Uh, um, it uh, is one that buds later. It is an early ripening variety and therefore is quite consistent, but not that concentrated from Germany. It is the major culprit behind mass production medium sweet wines in Germany. But there are some emerging really good styles. Um, Müller Thurgau does tend to find its best expressions really in places like Austria and in northern Italy. Uh, but there are some emerging ones coming from Germany as well. Then we have the Silvana grape variety, the third most planted white grape variety in Germany. Um, this is uh, very famous in Franken, but there are, of course, some other productions of it as well. The Rheinhessen has a little bit of this going on as well. Please note it's spelt with an I, whereas in France, Alsace, it's spelt with a Y. Um, so they produce to dry to sweet expressions. I think some of the most famous wines are the sweeter expressions and often served in those flask bottles, as we mentioned uh, as well. Um, other varieties we also find for whites, so you are well aware of those, is that we have uh, Grauburgunder, as we mentioned earlier when talking about Baden, and also Weissburgunder as well, which actually both of those are more made in a Burgundian style, often with lees and oak, making quite complex rounded styles, certainly from Baden. Black varieties, we have, of course, Spätburgunder or Pinot Noir. Now, it's called Late Burgundy Spätburgunder, as when it was planted, it was quite a late ripening variety for the very uh, early ripening Germany. Uh, so it has its name fixed in that, but you may see it labelled as either the German or the French today, Spätburgunder or Pinot Noir. Um, it does quite well in the warmer zones, um, but it is grown in a variety. You'll find it in places like Mosul. Um, you will find it in, uh, that's where it's quite cool and often quite light. It's in a region called the Aar, which you don't need to know. In Rheingau, it's found in Asmannhausen, which is a southwest facing steep sloped area where it makes quite complex wines. And then we talked about on this session, it's found in areas like Baden, where it's produced around the Kaiserstuhl on a, a lovely granite mountain called the Kaiserstuhl in very full bodied style wines. Um, so often you find it on granitic or slate soils. Um, it has a lack of calcium in the soil, so it doesn't have the brightness that you tend to get from a burgundy. But with the higher potassium in the soils of places like Kaiserstuhl, the Aar, um, Rheingau, you will find that the wines are more, um, much, they mature a bit more quicker. The acidities aren't as noticeable and they're a bit more savory in style, but they are wonderful wines, really wonderful wines. And then the other one is Dornfelder. Um, widely planted, um, quite loved. It's a, a Tenturia grape variety, which means it's colored throughout. It has a colored skins and a colored center. So therefore you can only make red and rose wine from this variety. So it normally makes quite fleshy, inky wines. Um, they can be quite uh, quite fruity. Um, often there's less contact, uh, really, and the wines are a little bit lighter in style, but they can be wonderfully dark and inky as well. Uh, and um, they tend to be sort of staying in the in, in the German market, Dornfelder. Um, other red varieties we find are things like um, uh, we have uh, a Schwarz Riesling, which is actually Mernier. We have Portuguese Trollinger 
uh, which is um, another key grape variety of the area as well. But don't worry about those so much. Um, so that kind of wraps up the theory of this session. And that is all Germany completed with the other two presentations. Um, a few questions so we can understand this area. Let's have a look. Uh, the Rheinhessen is known for producing a wide range of styles of both reds and whites. What grape variety would be the likely style for the simplest of their white wines in this big volume area? That will be the Müller-Turgau style variety. Simpler, more delicate, um, and with lesser acidities. I think that's what it's going to go into next. What conditions in the vineyard are likely to account for this variety producing simple wines? Um, so it is an earlier ripening variety than Riesling, so that means it doesn't have as much concentration. It doesn't have the same amount of acidity as Riesling, so it doesn't have that much fragrance or aromatics or ageability or flavour and aroma. So uh, it's therefore is not the biggest. You could also talk about here that there is generally higher yields of Müller-Turgal and younger vines. That would not be um, wrong as well. Describe the likely style of a premium rhein terras Riesling. So that's from the Rheinhessen just to the north of Nierstein. Uh, the likely style is it's likely to be amongst some of the fullest styles of Rieslings in Germany. You could add some more here with, you know, of course, high acidity and then probably things like stone fruit and riper citrus notes. What two conditions in the vineyard will contribute to this style? And now we're kind of repeating ourselves. If you've watched the three German sections, including this video, you'll notice that there's a repetition here because we're in a cold continental climate to get the best out of our grapes we really need to have the best conditions in the vineyards uh, it is a struggle to really ripen grapes here so we're looking of course at the classic components steep west or southwest facing slopes produce riper berries that should be sorry east uh because it's the rind to rest that should be let me cross that out always a few mistakes i'm only human of course let's uh, just cross that out Bosch. There we go. And let's scribble in what we need to actually know here. Let's put east and south east. Produce riper berries, certainly with the south, south um, uh, aspect, but the steep um, slopes as well. And then the proximity to that very wide river Rhine will absorb heat for increased ripening and light reflection off the river. Uh, and it will gain more ripeness due to that as well. Um, so that's just a short section there. If a question does come up for your WSET on Germany, it is much more likely to be weighted with Mosul and Rheingau regions, which are on alternative videos. Please look at the links in the description below this video to find out where they are. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you have learned something and it's been useful for your studies. Um, the best of luck for your WSET Level 3 examination. Please do check out the rest of our channel. We now have huge amounts of understanding videos for key concepts, regions, and grape varieties to really help you get the best out of your Level 3 examination. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, it, I, my name's been Jimmy Smith from West London Wine School, which is the WSET Educator of the Year 2018, South London Wine School, my second school, and my wine bar, Stretton Wine House, all in London. If you're in London next, please come and see us for a class, a glass, or a bottle. Uh, why not? Um, thank you so much for your time and attention. Any comments and questions, put them in the chat below this video or get in touch via social media. Until next time, ciao for now. Bye-bye.